everyone, it's Brittany Valadez, and I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right, Christmas is upon us, which means we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But can we prove that Jesus existed without the use of the Bible? We can prove that he existed. I'm going to show you how. The first person I'm going to mention is a man named Tacitus. Tacitus served under the Emperor Nero. Now, in his book Annals, Tacitus wrote of a fire that was believed to be started by Nero. To get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate, and a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the moment, again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. Then, upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of firing the city as of hatred against mankind. Now, if you go back to what he wrote, you'll see that he mentioned the word Christus. Christus, Christ, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate. In the Gospels, doesn't it mention Pontius Pilate? Hmm, what happened with that? We choose Barabbas or Jesus Christ? Tacitus himself wasn't a fan of Christians. When he referenced the pain inflicted by Nero, he called what they did their abominations. Now, he didn't say alleged or reported abominations. He wasn't a fan of Christians. Now, he also mentioned a mischievous superstition which broke out in Rome. Now, this mischievous superstition that he was talking about was Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Now, Tacitus also wrote that Rome was the place where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world become popular. Proof that he did not think Christianity was the cool thing to do. Now with that, there have been some who say, hmm, like for example, Robert Latester, who wrote in the Washington Post, little can be gleaned from the few non-biblical and non-Christian sources with only Roman scholar Josephus and Tacitus having any reasonable claim to be writing about Jesus within 100 years of his life. And even those sparse accounts are shrouded in controversy with disagreements over what parts have obviously been changed by Christian scribes. The manuscripts were preserved by Christians. The fact that both these authors were born after Jesus died, they would thus have probably received this information from Christians and the oddity that centuries go by before Christian apologists start referencing them. Hmm, does he have a point? Let's break it down. First thing, Latastor said, you know what? We can't believe Tacitus. He was born after Jesus died and he probably would have received the information from Christians. Sounds logical, right? Mm. Hold on. Tacitus was a well-researched historian. Remember, he wasn't a fan of Christians. So if he's going to do his research, why would he go get it validated by Christians? Let's say they told him, hey, there's this guy named Jesus Christ. Don't you think with him, first of all, hating Christians, second of all, being a well-researched man, meaning he did his research, he would go and ask other people who weren't Christians if this man named Jesus actually existed? Associate Professor Lawrence Mikhaitulik of Purdue University said this, Earlier in his career, when Tacitus was proconsul of Asia, he likely supervised trials, questioned people accused of being Christians, and judged and punished those who he found guilty, as his friend Pliny the Younger had done when he too was a provincial governor. Thus, Tacitus stood a very good chance of becoming aware of information that he characteristically would have wanted to verify before accepting it as true. Now remember, Tacitus didn't deny the existence of Jesus. He just didn't believe in the Christian faith. Another historian who spoke of Jesus Christ was Josephus Flavius. Now, Flavius was born around three to four years after Jesus died. In his book, Antiquities of the Jews, Josephus mentioned Jesus in reference to his brother James. Festus was now dead, and Albinus, our Albinus, was but upon the road. So he assembled the Sanhedrin of judges and brought before them the brother of Jesus, who was called Christ, whose name was James, and some others, or some of his companions. Traditionally, when a person had a common name, they'd reference them by the name of their father. Now, unfortunately for James, Joseph was also a common name. So the next thing, reference his brother, Jesus. But wait. Jesus was also a common name. 
Now, if you go back to what Josephus wrote, you'll see when he referenced Jesus, he said, who was called Christ. If Jesus didn't actually exist, why would he reference him in his book? Josephus was a Jew. He didn't care too much for Christians. He wasn't even a Christian himself. So Jesus actually had to exist in order for this Jewish historian to reference him. Now, Latastor said, you know what? Jesus wasn't referenced until several years after he died. Now, in an article for The Guardian, British New Testament scholar Simon J. Gathercole says this. Strikingly, there was never any debate in the ancient world about whether Jesus of Nazareth was a historical figure. In the earliest literature of the Jewish rabbis, Jesus was denounced as the illegitimate child of Mary and a sorcerer. Among pagans, the satirist, Lucician, and philosopher Celsus dismissed Jesus as a scoundrel. But we know of no one in the ancient world who questioned whether Jesus lived. It was only when mythicists began denying that Jesus existed that scholars started referencing him. Now, Latastor also mentioned, hey, some of the writings were obviously doctored by Christians. This is true. <gasps> oh, no. oh no. Oh, but wait, there's more. Theologian John P. Meyer omitted the phrases that are believed to have been added by Christians. That it is only possible to see what could have been the original intent of the passage. Around this time, there lived Jesus, a wise man, for he was one who did surprising deeds and a teacher of such people as accept the truth gladly. He won over many Jews and many of the Greeks. When Pilate, upon hearing him accused by men of the highest standing among us, had condemned him to be crucified, those who in the first place came to love him did not give up their affection for him. And the tribe of Christians, so-called after him, has still to this day not died out. Now, should this passage with obviously added words worry the believer? No, because when you take out those added words, you're able to see what the truth was. Mikaituik, Mikituik, hard last name, pointed out this. What is said and the expressions in Greek that are used to say it generally fit much better with Josephus' writings than with Christian's writings. One could suggest a forger went and exchanged everything. It is hypothetically possible that a forger could have learned to imitate Josephus' style or that a reviser adjusted the passage to that style. But such a deep level of attention based on an extensive, detailed reading of Josephus' works and such a meticulous adoption of his vocabulary and style goes far beyond what a forger or a reviser would need to do. If you read the passage, there's actually some words in there that are characteristic of Josephus that's only seen in his writings. Makaituik, again, probably pronounced it wrong, pointed these out. Calling Jesus, quote, a wise man and calling his miracles surprising deeds, use of one of Josephus' favorite phrases, accept the truth gladly, that in the word gladly part includes the Greek word for pleasure, which for Christian writers of this era, as a rule, had a bad connotation. Number three, the reference to attracting many of the Greeks, meaning Hellenistic Gentiles, which fits better with Rome and Josephus' time than with the references to Gentiles in the Gospel, which are few. Now, Latastor also said that, you know, some of these guys believed in Hercules. Therefore, if they believed in Hercules and they claimed Jesus existed, clearly he did not because Hercules did not exist. But when Hercules was referenced in the writings, the writer was actually crediting someone else for the words. Now, let's say I had a friend who said, hey, Brittany, I believe Hercules existed. If I believed Hercules existed, I would tell you guys this. Hi guys, I believe Hercules existed. But obviously I don't because he didn't. So I would say this. Hey guys, my friend believes that Hercules existed. Or, hey guys, my friend said that he believes that Hercules existed. See the difference? Now we as believers, we know that Jesus existed. This outside evidence just confirms what we believe even more. Thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. You can also follow me on my various social media accounts, which I will list below. Now, all the information I presented, I will put in links in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. I really want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks and God bless. Till next time, see you later.